सर आम स्टार्ट कर दबा गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल डियर लर्नर एंड आवर टू डे रिसर्च पर्सन रेस्पेक्टेड देवाशीष द्विवेदी सर हु इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट वीर सुरेंद्र साय यूनिवर्सिटी एंड टेक्नोलॉजी रेस्पेक्टेड हिमाद्री सर टुडे आवर सेशन टॉपिक इज इनफॉरमेशन सिक्योरिटी दैट इज सी एस पी ट्वेल्व आई रिक्वेस्ट एंड वेलकम टू द्विवेदी सर प्लीज स्टार्ट द सेशन नाउ थैंक यू thank you sir thank you very much so uh thank you very much uh, sir and i welcome all of you again to this session of uh, uh, the course information security that is csp 12 and uh, we're going to discuss today the third block uh which is about information probably today uh the subject is uh, quite uh, informative we are not going to discuss any technicality today we are going to discuss uh, we are not going to discuss any algorithms any problem statements or any uh, technical measures rather uh that's why yeah, it may be a bit of boring one but uh, rather uh, at the end of the session he will equip with a uh, lot of information which which uh, actually build up your understanding on network security and quite a hacking that you are going to uh, study in your coming semesters okay so <clears throat> before going to information security let us uh, try to understand how information plays a vital role in today communication and today world let us take an example of a corporate network okay so in a corporate network by means uh, by saying corporate network i mean that let's take an example of a youtube server or a google server so basically in youtube okay so there are two types of servers one is a public server this is the public server which is facing towards the public means anyone who is connected to internet can access to this public server of youtube and there are some private servers these private servers are only intended to uh, save data or to store data of private employees or some business policies rules so these are only for the private uh, you know to store the private data which are only intended for the organization and these server store the data which are intended for the public users okay now this is a very you know uh, uh, raw diagram that i have tried to uh, explain that how this short of architecture is exposed or prone towards different type of possible attacks for example now this is the client or user okay now this user may be an authorized user may not be an unauthorized user if it is a authorized user then this public server must have authorization must pro provide authorization to this client to access to the data or information or resources whatever resides in this servers okay so if this client has the authorization to access the data then it's well and good there is no problem let's take that this is not an authorized user it means excuse, excuse me sir yes sir, yes excuse me ha sound, huh. sound tick ke sir disturb hoche sir tick ke dekhile okay okay sir ha tick ke okay noise bahut aa suji noise okay okay sir ha ebe no i think it's clear ebe yes okay 
So if this client is a authorized one, then there is no problem to access the data from this server. But if this client has no authorization, okay, then there is a problem because if the client is not authorized, then the so, you know the person which is residing at this uh, who, who is controlling this server has no idea that what the unauthorized client is going to do with this data available in these servers that's why unauthorized access has a big problem for this server because the administrator has no idea about the consequences of the access of the unauthorized uh, you know person okay so this is a big problem for the access of the data. Now, for example, this is authorized you know, user. Now the communication happens through this link. Let us say this is a link, whether it is a where link or wireless link, hardly it matters, but the communication takes place between this client and the server happens through this link. Okay, now when the data or the information that we are going to access from the server, okay it will pass through this link now when the information is in the link okay so a lot of things can be done with this information that is information can be tapped information can be snipped or information can be trapped as well as it can be modified and retransmitted across this link it can be tapped or can be used for any fraudulent activities okay so many things you might have studied in your first unit that the information there are it, uh, there are modification there are uh, interception and there are fabrication so there are three uh, very crucial attacks can be done while the information in the transit in the link okay now this is somehow for example the client is authorized there is no nothing done in this you know the the links are fine nothing is done with the link still there is a chance that the data which is present in this server may be hacked hacked means somebody will unauthorizingly access to these servers and he can get control remotely so if somebody will get control over these servers then definitely he will get control or he will do whatever he wants with the data which are resides in these servers. That is essentially known to be hacking. We will discuss in a greater detail about hacking or somebody may also get access uh, to these computer by injecting viruses, worms or trojans. Okay, so this can be also happen and you can once, uh, once you get a remote connection to these servers through your trojans or virus or worms, you can, you know, do uh, you can uh, uh, make theft or you can do some fraudulent activities, or you may also destroy the server. That is called vandalism. Means physically destroying this server also be possible. Okay. Now come to the internal servers which uh, resides at the internal you know lands or internal virtual lands of a corporate network this internal server basically meant for the business policies or the internal you know employee details employee payroll management systems or employee uh, salary related informations employee promotion related information so all these uh, vital information related to the organization only is stored in these internal servers Basically, these internal servers can be hacked also in order to you know, change the business policy or in order to steal the business policies or in order to you know, uh, harm the normal or the natural process of working inside an organization. So there is a chance that the, the data present over here can be tapped, can be copied. Somebody may copy the business policy and in order to implement the same policy, in its organization if it, if, if it uh, seems handy okay it may alter the data present over here it may uh, you know puts uh, put some you know software attacks so that the hardware may be damaged or it may uh, inject some trojans or viruses or worms so that to make the software or the apps which is running inside this server basically the server operating systems and server you know softwares which enable this 
machine to become a server. So they may hack these softwares or corrupt these softwares by injecting sort of trojans and viruses. So now this sort of corporate network is, you know, keep you know storing a lot of information is not secure. It needs some security. If we are not concerning about the security, even we cannot access the information that we want to access from these servers. Suppose as a user, is the YouTube public server, if the data residing in this server is not secure, or the link which I am accessing through, or which uh, by using uh, which I am sending the request to this server is not secure, probably I cannot access to the YouTube video file or I cannot request for the YouTube video file or the video file is deleted from this server. I cannot, uh, this server cannot reply me with that video file or if this network link is not working properly or it is compromised, I cannot, even though the video file is here in this server, I cannot access the video file because the link is compromised. So at every position, you, you just uh, you know, uh, think about the security aspect. OK, so here as a computer, if somebody will access unauthorized plea to this computer, then definitely all the information residing in this personal computer can be compromised. So this computer needs some security. Now this link needs some security. And these servers which are residing at a different location of a corporate or organization, it needs security. Even the internal server, which is having some uh, very vital information regarding the business policies and the company information, also needs some security because they are dealing with the data or information. So today, information is nothing but a very vital thing, which is more and more important than the actual the physical hardware. Information is much more important and precious than the physical hardware, which is storing the information. OK, let us take another example. This is an example for the corporate network. Now come to the, some personal example. For our personal use, we are every day we are using internet. Uh, we, we are availing the internet services. For example, for email, we're using Yahoo Mail or Gmail. Okay, for social media, we're using Facebook. It is misprinted. It is Facebook. We're using Facebook. We are using Google Plus. Okay, for Messenger, we are using Skype. We are using uh, Google Talk. So all these you know applications or these services, internet services that we are using, we are storing, you just just uh, visualize the thing that we are storing some information. In the Gmail, while we have uh, initiated the account of our Gmail, we have submitted our in information, that is your name, your address, your mobile number, everything you have your uh, first uh, uh, registered, then the account will, account has opened. Uh, similar things well we started our account in uh, facebook then also we have submitted our information and for every account we have submitted our user id and a password and basically user id and password are also our information and we are also keeping a very vital information in the gmail we are every day we are using mail okay so official uh, you know for official purpose also we are using this gmail to you and uh, in uh, video conferencing also we are using skype or we are using google platform that is google meet or zoom there are a lot of applications available like zoom or uh, so every applications that we are using nowadays are you know full of information okay so let's take a facebook application here in the facebook application you have to first give your email id or a phone number or something and you are assigning the password, okay? So in Facebook, every day, when you are logging to the Facebook, you're using or you are uploading some messages, you are uploading some images, you are uploading some, some post. Okay, so you are thinking that I am as a user, I don't concern whether uh, other people are, uh, you know, any, anyone in the internet can access to my Facebook account or not. I'm not bothered about that. 
So I am using Facebook as if the only user I am using the Facebook. Nobody can use my Facebook account uh, because the user ID and password only I have for my account. But this is not the case all the time. You might have complaining in, in many cases that ki, uh, from my account some posts have been or some images have been uploaded or uh, some uh, in the Facebook Messenger somebody has message uh, a very you know pornographic image to a uh, female employee it is a very general complaint in in most of the uh, you know uh, organizations that by using any one's account somebody may go into the account of uh, facebook account of an employee and it may send some fraudulent uh, messages to other account you know other employee so in this case you know the two employees may go in a fight that's why you have sent such kind of messages but the the other one says that no i have not sent the messages it's, it's actually somebody else sent the messages it means who is that somebody else he is the you know person who has get an unauthorized access to your account he may steal your user id or password or something like that and he has got the access to your account so in that case your information which is there in the facebook is now at stake means it needs some security that's why the facebook also has a setting in, in the setting option he has a security option as well okay now let's take another example in the skype so in the skype we are using the skype for video conferencing we can in a in a multiple person can uh, you know communicate uh, with uh, by by the skype and generally for video conferencing we use this so all the you know communication or the all the information that we are passing uh, to, to each other through this skype can be recorded can be captured and this information can also be uh, you know uh, unauthorizedly accessed by somebody else and this information can be lit so this skype way we are using this skype but we as a user don't concern about that how our information will be utilized later on or who is going to utilize this information so that's why again it needs some security okay now let's take another example of where we are uh, you know putting our information that is e-commerce applications basically nowadays we are using you know online transactions for any sort of business or any sort of you know uh, purchasing of uh, things we are using the online you know platform and we are uh, in most of the platform we have also registered our you know the mastercard or the visa card or something like that even in uh, all the banking systems are also providing a facility of online transactions or online banking online net banking there also you are you know putting your information you are registered first and you are putting all the information so all your informations are again here so all the net banking facility or all the net banking mechanisms are also holding your information if at all somebody may leak that information then you will be losing or you lose a lot of money that you have in your account so this type of application again requires security because when you are adding your information it needs security now with this understanding let us come to the definition of information security so what should you know we we have seen that we are really you know saving our information at a lot of platforms okay and we know that we also we have seen that ki, uh, all these platforms are prone to different types of attacks it may be attacked at many ways and if at all they anyone attack it then definitely we will lose our vital informations so it needs some security so our information needs some security so what should be the policies procedures and technical measures used to prevent unauthorized access disclosure manipulation deletion theft or physical damage to information systems so this is what information security about we don't want that somebody may unauthorizedly access to our account or to our information at whatever may be the place we are storing the information whatever we are storing the information in the social networking site as i have 
already shown you in the example. We may store information in the Gmail account. We may store information in the online banking transactions. We may store information in our you know, organizational network. So whatever may be the information we have stored, information security must ensure that the information should be secure and it should ensure the confidentiality in the communication. It should in, uh, ensure the integrity. It should ensure the availability of the services. So information security is a study which involves policies, procedures, technical measures used to prevent unauthorized access. Disclosure means it should ensure the confidentiality. Manipulation means it should ensure the integrity of the message. Nobody can alter the message. Nobody can delete the message. It should be available. That is called, it should ensure the availability of the message. Nobody can theft or put a physical damage to the information systems. Now, information security, again, of three types. One is your computer security, which essentially means securing individual computers, which involves smartphones, palm tops, PD, etc. So whatever the devices we are going to use to access the internet or to store the information on uh, different servers. Okay, so we basically use either a laptop or a desktop or a smartphones or palm tops. These are the interfaces, basically. These you know devices are we use, and these are the interfaces where we can access to the internet and where we store our data in different servers over the internet. So all the devices that we are using for accessing the internet should be secure and all the, the study or the mechanisms provided to secure all these devices is nothing but our computer security. Now next come to network security. Network security means when the information is on the transmit or on the transit means when the data is in the network then securing information while it is transmitted across the network then it is called network security network security also ensures the security for the networking devices such as cables switches routers servers etc now come to data security data security is uh, is uh, nothing but securing of the personal data so securing privacy of the corporate or personal data, it is called the data security. We'll study, we'll discuss today that how privacy will ensure data security or the personal data can be secured by different privacy policies. Okay. Now let us uh, discuss some technical measures for information security, what technical measures we employ. Okay. So, the first thing that is identifiement to ensure the authenticity, most of the corporate or business hops said they do the identity management or the authenticity. Means business processes and tools to identify valid users. That valid users are nothing but the authorized users, which, which have the authorization to access the information which resides on a organizational system or organizational server. So identity management essentially assures that ensures that who are the valid users and who are the invalid users or unauthorized users. It identifies and authorizes different categories of users that is valid or invalid or authorized or unauthorized, specifies which portion of the system users can access. It means for, for example, you, you have a database, okay? Now, database consists of uh, some collection of tables, okay? So, which tables are being accessed by whom? We must need some policy for that. In a banking system, uh, when uh, a clerk is interacting with the, you know, the, the customers, then the clerk has to access some tables. Okay, because he deals with the deposits only, withdraw of money or deposit of money. So withdraw and deposit table can be accessed by that clerk, but employee related table or any business policy related tables or anything which is beyond the scope of the withdraw and deposit tables are not being accessed by that clerk. So the identity management policy must ensure that which portion of the data will be accessed by whom 
that is called access control rights okay then authenticating users and protects identities so identity management is the first step of information security that's why whenever we uh, you know initiate whenever we st uh, uh, start to join in any or wh whenever we try to open any account then there is a form that we used to submit and in that form we try to provide our informations our name our date of birth our address our you know in in many cases you need to uh, you know write your uh, some varied uh, id proof that is for voter id or pan card or driving license like that so this essentially is the first step which is required for identity management to identify the entities or the you know users who are going to use the particular network or the uh, who are going to access the uh, information on particular servers okay so identity management systems captures access rules for different levels of users so this identity management and authenticity rules and authenticity related informations are the first step towards the information security okay now you have studied about different you know technologies like uh, you might have gone through firewall in your second unit so firewall is also a part of the information security so what does the firewall do actually and what is a firewall is firewall maybe a hardware or a software that prevents unauthorized users from accessing the private networks okay so firewall is nothing but a gatekeeper of your home if you have a you know gatekeeper which is uh, which, uh, which is standing in front of your gate his work is not his work is only to allow the valid guest and he throw away to the invalid guest and uh, you have set the rules for him that who is a valid guest and who is not a valid guest so only the your friends are allowed into your house and who are not your friends are not allowed to your house that that things you have given the instruction to your you know gatekeeper so accordingly he will work for you and he will only allow the your friends to your house and he will disallow or deny the entering of your enemies or not your friends to your house so similarly a firewall is a software which is installed in our system for a you know pc firewall which is already installed in our system and which work is to either allow access or deny access according to the rules that we set in our firewall configuration okay so firewalls are of different types like static packet filtering or we can say you know the network uh, uh, firewall or there's a network address translation and application proxy filtering i guess you have studied all these concepts okay so network firewall and that is called uh, you know uh, socket filter application proxy filter and nat they are the three popular you know firewall we use so we can block a connection by putting some uh, you know uh, port address okay i have in networking class i have uh, given you what is a port address that is the application address for example http having port 80 so in a firewall rule i can say to block http uh, that is port number 80 then whatever request will be sent to the you know http will be blocked actually we have to uh, set inbound rules and outbound rules in a firewall inbound rules means the traffic coming to our you know computer that is coming under inbound rules and the traffic going out from our computer coming under the outbound rules so if i if i set an inbound rule that none no connection from the or none of the packets or information which are coming from the HTTP protocol will enter into our system. If a firewall is given that rule, then all the information coming from the HTTP server will be blocked. It will not allow the information coming from HTTP or port number 80 to enter into our system. That is what a firewall works. If I set the outbound rule that the port number 80 is blocked, at the outbound you know rules in the in configuring a firewall then if i if if from my system i want to access an you know uh, uh, a website 
which which uh, URL starts from HTTP, I cannot access. It will show a 404 page not found error because I have set an outbound rule that I, you know any request for port number 80 from my system cannot go outside or cannot be you know serviced. So from my system, any request having port number 80, that is any request with HTTP, it will not you know go outside from my computer. The firewall will block it because I have set my outbound rule. So likewise, a fire, firewall is a very basic security structure or infrastructure which either allow a connection or deny a connection. And this connection may be an inbound connection that is incoming traffic or an outbound connection or the traffic which is going out from my system. The firewalls are again, we can deploy a firewall in the network, okay, in the communication link, or you can deploy a firewall in the system. And firewalls are again of two types. Either it may be a software firewall. Basically, our personal computers is having a software firewall. But in the network, we may deploy a hardware firewall. Basically, the firewall installed inside a router or inside the server machine are the hardware firewall. Okay. And uh, the static packet filtering is nothing but we are uh, when we make some inbound or outbound rule by placing the uh, port number, then it is a static packet filtering. And uh, there is also we can place directly the protocols or IP addresses also we can, we, if you want to block IP addresses in the inbound and outbound rules, we can directly put the IP addresses so that in that IP addresses, whatever data is coming or going from our uh, system will be blocked. Basically in, in, in hostel, in our engineering hostels at the night time, we block the, you know, different websites. Basically Facebook is blocked from in the study hour. So what we do in our server room, we just try to block this through the firewall. There is a firewall installed in our server room. We only put as in the inbound and outbound rule that the IP address that is server address of the Facebook is blocked or at some time directly the URL is blocked like www.facebook.com directly we put it in the uh, outbound rules that the URL is blocked completely. So if anyone try to access to the Facebook, it will show a 404 page not found error. This is a basic example. So in your next you know, semester in network security, I will show you in, uh, I will demonstrate you how to set inbound and outbound rules, how to configure a firewall. Okay, and there we'll discuss in uh, greater detail. Another thing you have studied might have intrusion detection systems, that is IDS. This IDS is also part of the information securities or is also a technology for the information security. So what is an IDS? It monitors, okay, and it, it, it monitors the entire system or the networks for any policy violation or unauthorized access. Okay. It may monitor hotspots on corporate networks to detect and deter intruders. It examines events as they are happening to discover attacks in progress. Okay, one of the ideas may be the antivirus. So I guess we all are the user of antivirus. Okay, so what actually antivirus do? So an antivirus uh, essentially checks or it may scan our system. Basically, in a layman point of view, let me first uh, give you and the, uh, then I will go to the technicality of this. So antivirus, whenever, when we install an antivirus, so what, how it works basically. So whenever we insert a pen drive, then it start automatically start scanning that pen drive automatically. That is called your online detection of the virus or spyware or, you know, worms, trojans like that online detection. So antivirus nowadays are detecting, you know, any malicious uh, softwares in online. Okay. So whenever you are inserting a pen drive, it automatically scans. Whenever you are trying to, uh, you know, opening a email attachment, it will automatically scan. Whenever you try to insert a, you know, floppy disk in your system, it will automatically scan. Okay. So a virus works is to scan for any malicious software or any trojans or any anything, you know, present in the devices. So when you install a anti you know antivirus, it monitors your system for to check 
for any policy violation or any malicious activities happening in your system. So active virus is nothing but the intrusion detection system, and it will you know help protect your system from different malwares. That is the malicious software. Any unidentified you know uh, threats can also be you know identified by this antivirus, and it will show you or uh, show the administrator a message that. Uh, unknown device or unrecognized device is trying to opening your such and such files. You might have come across such kind of messages. This type of messages are pop up. Okay, so if you have an antivirus, you know, software installed inside your system, then you might have, you know, um, uh, shown the message that an unrecognized device is trying to open this file. Okay, so antivirus is an uh, you know type of intrusion detection system which is also helpful in protecting the information okay then we often we using this uh, wireless network nowadays okay wi-fi are our friend nowadays in most of the networks are wi-fi nature basically in mobile phones the networks that we are using are wi-fi in nature okay or in the offices organizations also we are using the wi-fi networks so we, it is very essential that Wi-Fi network needs uh, needs to be secure because in wireless network, if somebody want to you know uh, connect to the network, then it must uh, physically connect to the network because where where the network must need a connector. Okay, so the device that want to connect or that want to use our wired network, it must be physically connected. You can visualize that who is. Uh, you know, uh, trying to if an uh, intruder is trying to connect to your wired network, then you can visualize that person because he has to uh, use some connector and he has to use the wires to connect. But in contrast, you look at the wireless network, how dangerous it is because the range is almost uh, you know around 20 25 kilometers at least. Uh, the very I mean, I'm talking about a very you know hotspot reason that is if you you are using a mobile phone and you have make your hotspot on then up to 25 or 30 meter your range you know somebody may catch your range so you are not able to know that who is actually using your you know uh, wi-fi range because it is not possible for you to for all the time to you know look at that who is going to or who are using your internet unless you look at the you know connectivity details uh, you can't know that who are going to use your or who is using your you know wi-fi networks so this wi-fi network is you know putting a lot of challenge and it needs uh, security we have many technology we're going to study in the uh, you know, coming semesters that we have many wi-fi authentication and wi-fi security that is where equal and privacy is a protocol or an algorithm you can say which is being which uh, which was earlier used for the wi-fi uh, you know protection and authentication now wep uh, was replaced by wpa that is uh, wi-fi protected access okay then wpa uh, uh, recently you know uh, the replaced by wpa2 psk that is wi-fi protected access with paired shared key Nowadays, we are using this protection or this authentication uh, you know, algorithms for our new generation Wi-Fi, you know, uh, uh, 802.11 and Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so we are going to discuss in detail about these technologies in our network cybersecurity sessions. Now, another technology is encryption. Okay, you have studied about uh, you know a lot of algorithms. In this information security courses that uh, how to encrypt the information okay there are many algorithms some public key cryptographic algorithm or some private key cryptographic algorithm you have studied a very popular algorithm today is we use rsa algorithm you have studied all that so i don't need to go much detail on this encryption so basically encryption is also a part of information security because if your message is hacked or message is compromised somebody may uh, let's say intercept your message while the message is in the network okay if there is an interception attack okay at least if you encrypt the message with some code word by using some algorithm and key then the original message 
was not disclosed okay even though it is uh, you know hacked or uh, intercepted in the link so the third party or the intruder or the hacker cannot access what actually was sent he only get the coded message so somehow the confidentiality of the data is you know uh, uh, reserved okay so even though a message is uh, intercepted so encryption is also plays a bigger uh, role for information security okay now after going through different you know the importance of information security and uh, the technologies which uh, are being used for securing the information let's come to the next part of this unit that is called ethics okay so ethics means what ethics is a, a you know it's a, a very uh, common term which is being used in our day to day life so ethics means is it wrong you know what is wrong and what is right so before going to the actual meaning of ethics let me ask uh, or let me give you three questions that is is it wrong for corporations to read their employees email is it wrong for corporations to read their employees email is it morally permissible for computer users to copy copyrighted software should people be free to put controversial or pornographic content online without censorship now these three questions are really intent even though you are a computer professional even though you are a computer literate but you have no rights to enter into the private domain of somebody else who may be a computer literate may not be a computer literate but he is a computer user so if for example let me go through the first question suppose i am a user i am a employee of odisha state open university i have given a you know domain for my email i am using suppose uh, devasis.dvd@osu.ac.in let us say the email domain is given by osu.ac.in now this domain is given by osu.ac.me in means there is an administrator who is really who has the knowledge about all the domains okay now administrator knows that how to access the email of all the employees having a domain osu.ac.in but administrator should not go through the personal emails of all the employees that is called the ethics comes to picture means if i know how to read email without having the user id and password of that person if i have that kind of knowledge but my ethics should say that i should not do that thing because it is the mere sheer violation of the confidentiality of that user that's what the first question really means so an administrator who has the knowledge of all the user id and passwords of the domain osu.ac.in should see the personal emails of the employees of any employee he cannot see it is it is a crime we will see that we will uh, you know discuss about cyber crimes today okay there you will see that seeing a uh, email of another employee even though you have that you know access rights is a crime come to the second question is it morally permissible for computer users to copy copyrighted software we are very you know very uh, confident of using copyrighted software we are using every day even the you know windows that we are using today we don't have the license for that we are using a copyrighted version of the windows most of the cases we are using that but it is not up to the ethics of computer professionals should people be free to put controversial or pornographic content online without censorship a very you know technical thing why not why don't you think that youtube is such a huge you know site for video 
you can you know whatever video you want you can get through youtube okay so you can get through serials you can get through movies you can get through you know uh, the cricket matches you can get go through you know you can get uh, the uh, football matches tennis matches old you know all the old matches so it is a it is a you know uh, database so okay it has it is having a such a huge database of the video files still there are some videos are not you, you never you know get such video there are some video that is called pornographic videos you will not find in the uh, youtube okay because youtube has a censorship sensor board youtube sensor board has denied that you cannot upload any pornographic video if you upload a pornographic video then your server is no longer be a public server you need to you know get censorship certificate then only you can upload your you know pornographic video in the youtube servers that's why youtube is a public server he is not able to you know load such kind of videos otherwise you will get some different type of you know censorship certificate and he will get a reduced bandwidth you might have for you know seen that the such controversial videos have got a reduced bandwidth the speed of those sites are very very slow and youtube don't want that to to reduce his bandwidth and reduce or slows down his you know uh, video files for uh, downloading or uploading because he has abundant number of you know users who are using youtube very you know uh, there's a number of users so he he never go to that uh, pornographic section okay now with this three question let us come to what is ethics what is computer ethics so ethics is a field of study that is concerned with distinguishing right from wrong and good from bad it analyzes the morality of human behaviors policies laws and social structures okay so basically in the in the nutshell i can say that ethics means when you are uh, literate of something you must have the idea that what is wrong and what is right what should be done what should not be done that is your ethics so computer ethics means it analyzes moral responsibility of computer professionals and computer users and ethical issues in public policy for information technology development and use basically from ethics only our cyber laws have been emerged it is only ethics which has differentiated what is a uh, ethical hacking and what is an unethical hacking it is only due to computer ethics we have differentiated that what is a computer crime or what is a cyber crime and what is not a cyber crime so computer ethics helps us to you know to formulate different cyber laws to identify computer crimes or cyber crimes and formulate cyber laws okay so let me let me again to to clarify your understanding let me give 10 common violations of ethics then you can understand what, what is the actual meaning of ethics what we should do and what we shouldn't do okay so mostly we do these violations so let 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 me give one by one that is use of a computer to harm other people that is a violation of ethics for the computer professional okay this is the first violation second one is interfere with other people's computer work third one is snooping around in other people's computer files fourth one is use of a computer to steal any information or data or resources fifth one is use of a computer to be a false witnesses basically this fifth one is related to cyber forensics where if a crime has been happened and if you want to be the witness of that crime you cannot be a false witness for that crime you cannot use a computer to become a false witness of that crime that is you know a sheer violation of the ethics then that is called the pirated things the sixth one is a pirated one means 
copying or using proprietary software for which you have not paid okay so when a software has a license if you have not got the license key and still you are using that software means you are doing a you are violating the copyright or ipr that is called intellectual property right so you so using of a pirated software is also a cyber crime we will discuss so why, if we are using a pirated software if the owner of that software will lodge a complaint against you then you will fall behind bars seventh one is use of other people's computer resources without authorization or proper compensation you cannot use other you know people's computer resources you cannot use uh, the system of your employee without having the prior authorization that is sheer violation of the ethics use of other people's intellectual output okay so this again comes under the ipr intellectual property rights if a person have i know invented something he has patented that thing you cannot use that thing without the sheer permission of that person okay that is called use of other people's intellectual output is also a violation in the ethics not thinking about the social consequences of the program you are writing or the system you are designing if you are a software developer okay and if you have develop a program or application without thinking the social consequences for example let me think that you have uh, you know you have developed a application and you have installed in the play store and the application is only to you know which which uh, provide uh, address messages to a particular community for example you are a hindu and you have designed a, you have developed a apps which which intention is to only spread hatring you know hatter messages Uh, to other community to the christian community then you will find you you will uh, you know uh, you will face a uh, huge social consequences for that maybe uh, you know it it results in riots like that two communities may uh, go in the riots like that so you cannot you shouldn't develop any application even though you are a computer literate or a software developer you cannot develop the ethics you know Uh, uh should prevent you to develop such applications which which uh, result in severe social consequences okay then the tenth one is not using a computer in ways that ensures consideration and respect for your fellow humans you cannot use a computer which uh which is harmful to the society that's what we mean about so from these 10 points you must understand what the ethics means and what a computer professional should follow the ethics and what type of ethics we are talking about these 10 examples are very much clear for your understanding now come to moral responsibilities of computer professional i i just try to elaborate the study again further the computer professional uh they must have a responsibility to assure the correctness reliability availability safety and security of all aspects of information and information systems perform all professional activities and duties in accordance with all applicable laws and the highest ethical principles so as a computer professional we must follow these 10 things these are the very 10 common and the basic things which really comprises of the basic of the computer ethics so if you are a computer professional you should follow the 10 rule that i have already just uh, discussed in the previous slide and perform all the activities and duties in accordance with all applicable laws that is called rules and regulations and the highest ethical principles okay there are many forums and many associations are there who are developing or who have developed the rules regulation and laws okay the associations uh, like issa that is information system security association then sca that is association for computing machinery then aba association for behavior analysis then aitp associate information technology professionals these are some of the association there are many other associations are there 
who are developing the laws and rule regulations to ensure the uh, what uh, ethics for the computer professionals okay so here with let us uh, come to another part of our discussion that is privacy so we initiated our discussion with information security ethics and privacy so let's discuss what is privacy it is again an informative term we know that what is privacy we always you know talk about privacy i need privacy so what is that it is the right of organizations or individuals to control access or interference by unauthorized users or applications into their private affairs this is only the the in the nutshell the meaning is that let's take an example suppose you want privacy at your home so what do you do you just locked yourself at one room and you instruct your mother or your sister or whoever is there in your family that please don't disturb me i want some privacy it means you lock the room anyone try to enter into your room must knock at your door then only either if you allow him that please come inside the room then only he can come or not that is what the privacy means so in computer language the privacy this is the technical definition it is the right of organizations or individuals if i am a individual user then i have the right to control access control access means who is going to access my you know private uh, you know apps or private section of my computer or cyber world who is going to access and who is not going who is not access who is authorized to access or who is not authorized to access so privacy ensure the right for an organization or to an individual to control access to control the access or interference by unauthorized users or applications into their private affairs your private affairs basically means the our information where we uh, the information resides at different applications like information resides at our social networking sites and the information resides at our you know online transactions you know uh, in the online net banking site okay at our video conferencing the information that we are passing through the video conferencing so we should provide as a you know individual that who is going to access this information and who is not going to access that is what privacy means you know in western nations it is often held that citizens should be informed about how organizations plan to store use or exchange their personal data and that they should be asked for their consent what does it mean it is it, this statement is having a very intense meaning okay just you can read it again it is often held that citizens should be informed about how organizations plan to store use or exchange their personal data and that they should be asked for their consent means what let's take an example you are getting a very very free service from facebook and whatsapp now have you ever imagined that why whatsapp and facebook are providing us such a beautiful service in free of cost are they are you know so you know uh, they are so rich that they have a lot of money so that they are you, you know providing us a free service we are only uh, recharged with some net pack and that uh, money is going to the uh, you know account of a uh, money but how facebook is now providing us the service yeah we are paying for the net pack that's good but facebook is providing the service facebook is a different company reliance zero is a different company bsnl is a different company so my i am paying for my isp but isp has no relation with the facebook or whatsapp still the whatsapp and facebook without uh, taking money from us are providing us the free services where this statement plays a lot of role again if you understand me why facebook is providing free of cost services then you can understand this statement how facebook plan to store use or exchange our personal data that whether we should be asked for that or not facebook hamara data ko kaise store karta hai kahan pe use karta hai kiske sath exchange karta hai 
हमारे साथ वो कुछ शेयर करता है या नहीं अगर वो शेयर नहीं करके हमारा डेटा को कहीं बाहर बेच रहा है और पैसा कमा रहा है देन इट इज अर वायोलेशन ऑफ आवर प्राइवेसी ऑफ द डेटा और ज्यादातर आप अभी देखे होंगे हाल में वन सिक्स मंथ्स बैक देर वॉज ए केस अगेंस्ट फेसबुक दैट इन द यूरोप यूरोपियन और साउथ अमेरिकन कंट्री दैट की फेसबुक इज यूजिंग आवर डेटा ही सेलिंग आवर डेटा एंड अर्निंग मनी सो इट इज अ मियर वायोलेशन ऑफ द प्राइवेसी ऑफ द कस्टमर यू नो द यूजर्स ऑफ फेसबुक सो समबडी हैज पुट अ पीआईएल पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट लिटिगेशन केस अगेंस्ट ऑफ फेसबुक और फेसबुक ने अपना प्राइवेसी को फिर से एनहांस किया है और इट हैज प्रोवाइडेड अ नोट यू नो व्हाट एमओयू और इट हैज साइंड अ एमओयू एंड इट हैज आल्सो गिवन द कंसेंट दैट कि अगर कहीं फ्यूचर में फेसबुक किसी का डेटा को यूज करता है फॉर सेलिंग पर्पस देन he should bound to ask for the consent of the user agar user voluntarily consent karta hai ki theek hai aap mera data ko use karo mera profile picture ko use karo mera messages ko use karo then only he can use the data otherwise he cannot sell the data ab hum jitna bhi post karte hain wo sare post sell hote hain और वो आपको कैसे विजुअलाइज होगा जब भी ओपिनियन पोल्स आते हैं कि कौन सा पार्टी जीतेगा इस बार इलेक्शन में सो ऑल दी पोस्ट दैट वी हैव मेड थ्रू दिस सोशल नेटवर्किंग साइट्स हैव बीन सेल्ड देन ओनली दे कैन कम अप विद द ओपिनियन पोल्स और दे मे कम अप विद सम यू नो रिजल्ट्स दैट इन दिस इलेक्शन हु इज गोइंग टू विन इफ अ न्यू प्रोडक्ट हैज लॉन्च्ड ओके देन देयर रेटिंग विल बी डिसाइडेड बेस्ड ऑन दी comments that we have posted in our social networking sites so all our charts are really you know marketed are really mined there is a concept called data mining that lot of data mining techniques involved jahan pe ki hamara data ko mine kiya jata hai analysis kiya jata hai then the required information is extracted from our data and that required information are uh, you know are being uh, you know sell to different organization of the interest कोई अगर फिल्म का जो रेटिंग है वो जानना चाहेगा तो मेरा व्हाट्सएप का जितना व्हाट्सएप से डाटा खरीदता है और व्हाट्सएप उसको रिक्वायर्ड इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइड करता है एंड वहां से उसको पैसा बनता है और ही कैन गेट द रेटिंग ऑफ द फिल्म सो वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल इन नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी यू नो क्वेश्चन बट फॉर द टाइम बींग दैट इज अर वायोलेशन इफ द सोशल नेटवर्किंग साइट सेलिंग योर डेटा मीन्स इज अर वायोलेशन ऑफ द प्राइवेसी okay so privacy privacy should ensure that who has you know you should must the the individual or organization must have the rights to control access or interference by unauthorized users or application into their private affairs agar hum kisi bhi private you know you know jo applications mein hamara data ko store karte hain to it is the you know uh, responsibility of that application that ki our data should be you know uh, should the confidentiality of data should be preserved okay then you come to intellectual property rights so ipr that is popularly called the ipr intellectual property right so ipr is the right this is given to own or use of a creation such as literary industrial design or an innovative novel product okay it means if you have developed something which is a novel one which is a very new one nobody has done it like you have invented like uh, uh, your marconi invented radio which was which was a novel idea which was a no which was not there earlier so it was uh, the invention of marconi so the the uh, design which was given by marconi was a uh, intellectual property okay so that design that is called industrial design any innovative model or any innovative products should get a uh, intellectual property right if anyone try to use or copy that product or that design he must as you know take permission from the owner otherwise it is a violation of the intellectual property rights and if a complaint will be lost against the violation of intellectual property rights then is a it's a cyber crime and the person would definitely be in the bars okay so again i'm repeating that the intellectual property right is a right given to own 
or use of a creation such as literary, industrial design, or an innovative novel product. Okay, there are some exclusive information to use or to provide rights for others to use or manipulate owned information. So if you have, if anyone gets uh, gets a uh, uh, exclusive rights for a particular product or information uh, to for to own that information or to get a right to use that information exclusively okay then he may provide rights for others to use or manipulate the own information okay now property rights uh, it involves trade secret basically the intellectual work or product belonging to business firms not in the public domain that is called trade secret other koi company apna koi business logic okay he has developed a business logic of your own or a business model or a, any you know business uh, design he if, if he has you know developed then he can he he cannot act you know uh, uh, disseminate it to the public domain it is coming under the trade secret okay so none other similar business firms or company can take that design or that policy from the company who has invented that so it is a it is the intellectual property you know belongs to this trade secret then there is a copyright copyright means statutory grant protecting intellectual property from being copied or for the life of the author plus 70 years okay so if if you have got if your author have got a copyright then nobody can copy that things if you are developed a software or you know if you developed the application then and if you have got the copyright for that application then you cannot nobody can copy that software okay at least for the life of that author plus 70 years this is the rule that some organization have set for the copyright if you have copied the something within this period then it is called copyright infringement so you are infringe infringe the copyright you know you are violate the copyright policies then also somebody may get a patent for that patents are nothing but if you have done some novel work if you can submit to the patents uh, uh, you know there are patent offices are there they will evaluate that whether it is uh, you know uh, suitable for patents or not if you have uh, you know registered it as a patent then uh, for the 20 years nobody can copy your idea nobody can copy their you know the model if anyone wants to copy or use your model he must get permission from you and he must give royalty for you without giving royalty you cannot use the patent registered at least for 20 years okay now how to ensure your uh, you know privacy in this information security era okay so what do we do that first protect your device from malware and hackers okay you can you should prevent worms and viruses and trojans basically for this we have to use some anti malware or anti virus softwares and there are some anti trojan software for anti viruses you know we have uh, you know avast anti virus trend microscan anti virus so there are a lot of antiviruses that are uh, available in the market. So we can protect our device from these malwares by using some intrusion detection system like your antivirus softwares. Then protect your information from physical threats. Okay, physical threats means uh, that is called your vandalism. Okay, vandalism, uh, which means that physically nobody should attack your you know uh, devices nobody can put harm to your you know devices physically by a physical attack so you should ensure your workplace and devices are secure okay you may put some locks you may uh, you know give some boundary walls you may uh, you know provide some uh, security guards to your office or organization so that nobody can come easily and enter into your uh, you know office premises to put physically uh, harm to your systems okay and create and maintain secure passwords you know passwords are very important nowadays because we have amount you know a lot of accounts we have accounts in facebook we have accounts in gmail we have accounts in uh, you know other online transactional sites okay so every accounts we have to give a user id and password so it is very essential because 
if you don't give a strong password then if somebody may guess that password then definitely he will go through or he will access to our accounts so in order to protect our information or in order to protect or ensure the privacy of our data okay so all the places where we use our information should be password protected and the password must be strong basically you might have uh, seen the instruction that the password must contains character in between 8 to 13 and it must have it must have a lower case letter or upper case letter then a special symbols so the password must be a combination of lower case upper case special symbols and some numbers numeric values so if these things are there in a password and the password length is in between 8 to 15 then it is termed as a strong password so whenever you are using passwords in your different accounts then definitely use strong password involving your uppercase letter lowercase letter then numeric letter okay special characters like at the rate hash underscore like that and uh, and another important thing is that you shouldn't use same passwords for all your account okay because if one password is hacked then all the other account password will be easily hacked okay so you should use different passwords for different uh, accounts and particularly you should uh, you know very sensitive password is your gmail password that is your mail password because if you forget any password then that password can be recovered through your mail password so if you if anyone can get your mail password then he can easily enter to your cyber world because every password can be now reset through your email password so very carefully you have to uh, choose your email passwords basically and you shouldn't you know use the common passwords like your name or your date of birth like that because in that case it is easily guessed if if I, if i go through your facebook account i know what is your name and i know what is your date of birth I may try for 10 to 15 times for your Gmail password or your banking password for, and that related to your name or date of birth. If you have given the password related to your name and date of birth, by easily 10 to 15 common passwords. So try to avoid the passwords which, uh, which involves your name or date of birth like that. Try to use a password which is, uh, you know, you and Nick, but it's important for you to remember that password as well because you no need to write the password at any place because if you write the password at any place if somebody will access that place then definitely again your password you will be lost or somebody may get access to your password the password is very very crucial for to secure or to ensure privacy of your information then protect the sensitive files on your computer learn to encrypt the data files and this encryption is is not is none of your business basically this encryption is done by the applications like your whatsapp whatsapp is ensuring that end-to-end -end encryption so whatsapp is encrypting your data means if you're writing hi then at the back like the uh, presentation layer of the OSI model uh, so it is encrypting the data and when the data is in transit so whatsapp application is designed for ensuring end to end encryption and your similarly your gmail also while you are sending data through gmail it is also encrypting so gmail application is taking care of that encryption operation then recover from the information loss it is very important if you are a information security professional then you must break up your data because there's a chance that you, your system may be crashed at some point or your system may be somehow uh, you know, come with uh, failure. If your system fails at that time, you must have a backup. Then only you can recover the data easily. Otherwise, if your system fails, then your data fails. So now it is mostly we're using, if, if a corporate organization is a big organization, so they use servers, but if you are running a small scale office or small scale organization, then you must have some, you know, a backup hard disk. Basically, we as a personal, you know, as a personal computer, we are using one TB of hard disk, external hard disk. So all the data always I have kept with my external hard disk. So whatever data is inside my computer, those data are inside my one TB external hard disk. So in any case, if I lose my computer, then my data will not be i have not lost my data because i have already stored the data in the external hard disk 
another thing i will show you in the network cyber security you know sessions that how i can you know uh, put some uh, backup points okay so i will in the computer i will show that how i can uh, you know put some uh, backup points so that the system will backup automatically our data in that point so if any problem arises if a virus attacks happens like the trojan attack was happened in last one year that is your one cry virus so it encrypted all the systems and corrupted all the data so if some such thing happened to you so what you can do that you can restore your system to a position where there was no attack or where there was no virus so you must have to decide the restoration points okay so restoration point also you can do with your system so that it will automatically restore your system and it will automatically recover your system from any such kind of virus attack okay so backup is very very essential this is very essential wherever you go you first check for your backup okay then destroy sensitive information delete data permanently which are not of use you can delete that keep your online communication private again encryption that is email chat whatever um, you must ensure that whether your email or chat application that is messenger applications are encrypted or not then remain anonymous and bypass censorship on the internet using vpns we will discuss about this vpn concept and how to how to make yourself anonymous means nowadays we are not using the address of our actual server we are always hiding our server inside a vpn server that is virtual private network for example if i want to access through the osu server if it is not inside a vpn directly i will access the osu server and i can launch a attack to the osu server basically if not attack what i can do i can uh, what uh, you know stop the services from the server i can make a dos attack i will study i will teach you what is a dos attack denial of service attack that is i will uh, destroy i will uh, interrupt the service from this you know server but if the server is inside a vpn i cannot get the ip address of that server i only get the ip address of the vpn so i cannot directly attack to the osu server because we cannot find the actual ip address of the osu server so that is why today all the security professionals are look for vpns and they try to uh, keep their actual server inside the vpn so that any attacker from the outside he will get the ip address of the vpn not the actual ip address so if you don't get the actual ip address you cannot launch an attack to the server so in order to protect the server from the outside attacks we must use vpns okay i will discuss what is virtual private networking and how the things are actually done then protect yourself and your data when using social networking sites like you must go through the facebook settings and try to find out in which locations your facebook has been in opened if you go to the setting of the facebook in the very right corner you go to the setting of the facebook then you will come to the security and logins in the security and logins you will find that in which devices from which devices facebook has been opened and what are the location of that devices if you find that the the devices if, for example you know that in which devices you are opening your facebook account for example your either from your laptop or from your uh, you know mobile phone smartphones so if the setting option of the facebook is showing that the device is something else like you are using android phone but somehow he is showing iphone it means somebody else has opened your facebook at some other location so that means you can know that your facebook has hacked somebody has hacked your facebook so from the security options you can enhance the security you may go for two phase authentication security you may on the you know things that if anybody or any uh, fraudulent location my facebook is uh, somebody will trying to on my facebook log in my facebook then please provide me a message so there is the option given in the facebook you know setting you can go there and you can change that setting so if 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 you find any pro you know, problem on that you may ask me directly i will help you how you can change the facebook setting to enhance the security similarly in all the accounts you have the security options where you can put your where you can make your 
uh, data more secure. Now, another term that is called cyber crime. Okay, so cyber crime is used to describe a uh, unlawful activity in which computer or computing devices such as smartphones, tablets, personal digital assistants, etc., which are standalone or a part of a network, are used as a tool or target of criminal activity. In a nutshell, I can say use of a computer or computing devices for any criminal activity is nothing but your cyber crime. Hum, computer, ya, mobile phones, and every computing device ko use karke, or internet ko use karke, jo bhi hum criminal activity karte hai, which is a severe violation of the ethics, okay, or which is a violation of the cyber laws, then it is called a cyber crime. Another definition you can go that any violations of criminal law that involve a knowledge of computer technology for their perpetration, investigation, or prosecutions. Then it is called cyber crime. A computer may be a target of crime, means breaching confidentiality of protected compromised data or accessing a computer system without authority. That is called here computer is the target in the you know, cyber crime. Or computer may be used as the instrument okay, for making a crime. So theft of trade secrets. Just on a plus trade secrets of business policies, when you have business policy or quick company disclose government, so it is a trade secret. So if a company wants to uh, you know steal a uh, trade secrets by using the computer, then it's also a uh, cyber crime. Using email for threats or harassment. So any criminal activities which involves a computer and a computer network. Then it is called a cyber crime. There are different crimes. I, I'm just giving you a few examples of different cyber crimes because uh, you know the list is uh, quite uh, mature and you will get thousands of uh, examples of cyber crime. Every day new criminal activities are being reported. So I'm just giving you a few you know, very common attacks. One is cyber stalking. Cyber stalking means you want to put harassment, you want to uh, threatening to somebody else by using your uh, Gmail or any uh, chart, you know, any messenger that is called cyber stalking. So, by using your social networking apps or platforms, you may uh, the uh, cyber criminals may threat somebody else or they may uh, put uh, a mental harassment to somebody else. Means, for this example, somebody may you know send a message that. Meet me along at 9 p.m. or else I will upload your photographs on the internet. This is called cyber stalking. This is a crime. Aap kisi ko blackmail nahi kar sakte. If uh, some internal, you know, in uh, for if you have the photograph of your internal movements, you cannot blackmail. And if you are using this email or any internet platform to blackmail somebody by by just putting this kind of messages, then it is called cyber stalking. Then come to phishing. Phishing is a very popular attack nowadays. Phishing is nothing but to it is done for identity theft. Aapka user ID, password, aapki jo ki personal uh, information hai, jo ki vital hota hai, for basically for your to to uh, get the uh, bank account details like that. So if the act, this act is called phishing. Basically, phishing can be done by sending you a you know email, which seems that it is coming from a uh, very authenticated site, but it actually a uh, phishing message. Just say, yeah, Gmail Maya hai, wo bolta hai ki Google verification aya hai. You may think a user may think that it is coming from the Google office, and uh, he, he from by this mail he is asking for your full name, email ID, password, profession, year of birth, country. So if you give your email ID and password, now he will access to the you know your google account you will get the password somehow agar aap ye soste ho ki this is coming from the google and if you provide the email id and password now he will get your email id and password now he use this email id and password to get the user id and password of your bank transactions so your online banking passwords can be reset through your email password so through phishing he may get through your online banking transaction by just providing a 
fake message. Okay, most of the users are not computer literate, so they may you know believe that yes, this is coming from the Google. So I have to put my full name, ID, and everything. I will just send a reply. Now the hacker will get into the all your details, and he may uh, opening your mail. He may use your mail for fraudulent activities. He may receive your passwords at different locations, and he may steal your information. Okay, so there are many you know, flavors of phishing. I will discuss in our cybersecurity class, network cybersecurity. So this is a typical example of phishing. Now come to computer vandalism. That is, uh, is an act of physical destroying computing resources using physical force or malicious code. Where we physically kisi bhi computer resources ko we we uh, give harm to any physical. Here, this laptop screen is broken. So this is an act of computer vandalism to physically harm, put harm to any computer resources. Then come to spamming. All we are conversant with spamming. If we, if you are a user of, you know, Gmail, you know there is a spam folder. Spamming is nothing but unwanted messages. Okay. So uh, how we can tell a message is spam or not means if the message has, you know, sent or uh, the message is sent to not only to single person but to a number of person. Okay, so the recipient of the message is, you know, more, not a single person or the identity that is the identity of the uh, source is not, you know, found or the identity is not clear. The identity of the source is not clear or the recipient is not expected to receive this message. Then this is called a spam. So Google has all the, you know, they have the technology to filter out the spam messages and automatically the spam messages are filtered out in a spam folder. So this spamming is also a criminal activity or is a cyber crime. Then that is called cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is very popular attack nowadays. There's a very, you know, what what where they have done, the they have uh, the hackers made uh, some script. Uh, they just put a script in the web server and that script will run at the, uh, you know, client machine. So it's a client-side scripting. So when we suppose we want to uh, go to the particular website, then basically if we uh, in the browser, if we run that website, then that client side scripting will run in this page. And what they do, what is the function? They only access to the cookies. So if they will access to the cookies, then they will know the you know history of or of the you know that user. They will know all the activities uh, that is being done for a particular moment. So cook in cookies, basically, uh, they store the browsing activities, browsing histories. OK, so they can steal our browsing history. Sometimes in cookies, they, the browser stores the user ID and password. So by accessing to the cookies, they may get our user ID and password from our browser. So cross-site scripting also we'll discuss in detail. Then that is called web jacking between the hackers of different countries. Basically, the hacker gain access to a website of an organization and either blocks it, modify it to several political and economical or social interests. Means, uh, which, uh, which mein, which Iranian hackers ne kya kya Pakistan ki koi collected ko, railway ka website ko hack karke, wahan pe ye message pada tha. Iranian cyber army. This site has been hacked by Iranian cyber army. So. उन्होंने क्या किया एक एनिमेशन वीडियो यहां पे या एनिमेशन कोई दे देते हैं जिसमें ईरान का फ्लैग होता है ऐसे इंडियन हैकर्स 2014 में पाकिस्तानी कोई एक एजुकेशनल साइट का यू नो हैक किए थे और वहां पे इंडियन फ्लैग पोस्ट किए थे सो दैट इज कॉल्ड वेब जैकिंग सो टू एक्सेस अ वेबसाइट फॉर एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इदर टू ब्लॉक्स और मॉडिफाइड फॉर सेवरल पॉलिटिकल और इकोनॉमिकल और सोशल इंटरेस्ट देन कम टू वेरी पॉपुलर दैट इज डॉस एंड डीडीओएस अटैक that is denial of this attack is an attack for the interruption for interrupting a service from a server. It is a cyber attack in which the network is choked and often collapsed by flooding it with useless traffic and thus preventing the legitimate network traffic. Means attacker let us say they are a group. I'm just showing only two two people who have compromised this Joby are nothing but the user computers. These are compromised computers, means this, this attacker have somehow get a remote access to this computer by inserting a Trojan. Basically, Trojans insert karke remotely access kya jata hai computer ko. Or jo computer remotely access ho gaya hai is uh, hacker ke dwara, isko hum zombie computer bolte hai. 
अब जो भी कंप्यूटर को यूज क्यों किया जाता है कि किसी के अगर सर्वर को मुझे डाउन करना है तो मैं क्या करूंगा इस कंप्यूटर को यूज करूंगा और इसमें बोलूंगा तो फेक पासवर्ड डालते रहो तो ये अगर सपोज मुझे आई के साइट को जाम करना है चौक कर देना है पूरा उसका सर्विस को बंद कर देना है तो मैं क्या करूंगा आई के साइट को लॉग इन करूंगा और फेक पासवर्ड दूंगा लेकिन आजकल की सिक्योरिटी इतनी एनहांस हो गया है कि इफ यू गिव थ्री पासवर्ड्स देन आपका जो कंप्यूटर है वो कुछ टाइम के लिए आप और पासवर्ड दे नहीं पाओगे तो उस केस में इसलिए वो क्या करते हैं काफी सारे कंप्यूटर को इन्वॉल्व किए हैं दिस इज दे आर कॉल्ड दी साइबर आर्मी तो ये तीन पासवर्ड देगा ये फिर डाउन हो जाएगा सिमिलर टाइम में ये सारे लोग तीन तीन पासवर्ड देते रहेंगे तो अभी क्या होगा ये जो सर्वर है आई का इनकी फेक पासवर्ड को एनालिसिस करके चेक करते करते ही बिजी रह जाएगा तो कोई जो लेजिटिमेट यूजर जो कि एक्सेस करना चाहता है आरसीटीसी को वैलिड यूजर आईडी पासवर्ड के साथ वो क्या करेगा एक्सेस नहीं कर पाएगा दिस इज कॉल्ड एन अटैक ऑफ इंटरप्शन सो सर्विस इज इंटरप्टेड ए वैलिड यूजर इज इंटरप्टेड फॉर गेटिंग एक्सेस टू अ सर्विस तो डॉस अटैक का काम ही यह है कि डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस मीन्स टू इंटरप्ट ए सर्विस एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस कब हो जाता है जब मल्टीपल कंप्यूटर्स जो भी कंप्यूटर्स इन्वॉल्व होते हैं डॉस अटैक में उसको हम डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस कहते हैं पहले जब रूल था कि आप जितने भी मर्जी पासवर्ड दे सकते हो अगर रॉन्ग होता है तो उस केस में अटैकर अकेला इन्वॉल्व होता था वो सब दो सौ पासवर्ड खुद ही अकेला ट्राई करता था और इस सर्वर को बिजी रखता था लेकिन सिक्योरिटी एनहांस हो गया है एक कंप्यूटर को ओनली थ्री थ्री टाइम्स अलाउ कर सकता है अगर रॉन्ग किया तो उसको फिर वो अलाउ नहीं करता है इसीलिए वो डॉस अटैक पे आ गए अब वो क्या करते हैं कि मल्टीपल एक पूरा टीम बना लेते हैं हैकर्स का वो डिफरेंट कंप्यूटर्स को ट्रोजन इंसर्ट करके कॉम्प्रोमाइज कर लेते हैं अगर आप इंटरनेट यूज करते हो और आइडियल टाइम आपको इंटरनेट ऑन है और आप सिस्टम्स को आपके मोबाइल को आइडियल रख दिए हो उस केस में अगर ट्रोजन इंसर्ट हो गया है तो आपका कंप्यूटर भी जो भी हो सकता है इसलिए अगर आप इंटरनेट जब यूज नहीं करते हो अगर आप यूज नहीं कर रहे हो तो ऑन मत करो डाटा को बंद कर दो ओके सो विद दिस आई विल कंक्लूड दिस सेशन आई हैव सम अदर थिंग्स आर देयर व्हिच व्हिच आई थिंक इट विल टेक सम टाइम टू कंप्लीट इट सो आई विल शेयर द स्लाइड्स इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू मे आस्क मी ऑनलाइन एंड ऑफलाइन आई हैव द व्हाट्सएप नंबर आल्सो सो हियर इज द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन सो एनी क्वेश्चन यू मे आस्क थैंक यू सर सर साउंड आशु जी हाँ हाँ यस 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 सर ओके थैंक यू सर फॉर ए ब्रिलियंट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड ब्रिलियंट सेशन सो देर आर सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट आक्स वन आफ्टर वन आदर ओनली वन क्वेश्चन इज देयर सर व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्लोज कर so yes, as i sir. mentioned that w uh, wpa is uh, nothing but wifi protected access and uh, wpa psk is wifi protected access with paired shared key this two actually are two different algorithms okay i will discuss it in a greater detail for them work it's a very lengthy and complicated process we will discuss in detail But these two are the basic algorithm for Wi-Fi, you know, uh, for authentication in the Wi-Fi. So when a Wi-Fi router is given, then we must uh, have to select which type of authentication we need. There are three options. If any router you are bringing, then there's a option for open authentication where you don't need to give a password in the open authentication. Then there is a button for WPA that is Wi-Fi protected access. There's an algorithm for that. Make it means it's the only one uh, step authentication and WPA to PSK authentication. So it is the two algorithm. So the WPA uh, uh, and uh, WPA PSK two is more you know secure authentication mechanism.
हेलो यस यस सर सो इफ एनी क्वेश्चंस योर लर्नर्स इफ एनी क्वेश्चन देन यू कैन ऑन म्यूट योर माइक एंड आस्क डायरेक्टली टू मिस्टर द्विवेदी सर अदरवाइज यू विल वाइंड ऑफ हियर I think sir there is no questions from learner side okay so thank you okay it. okay thank you thank you for a brilliant uh, presentation sir so now we will wind up here thank you all learners for participating in the session thank you all okay thank you thank you all thank you very much